Reactions continue to swell over the executive order President Biden authorized yesterday regarding the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, this policy, which comes after this administration has allowed in more than 10 million illegal immigrants into the country, stops border officials from admitting new asylum seekers once the seven-day average of daily encounters at the border exceeds 2,500. However, there are many, 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 did I say many? Loopholes. So what is this really about? Joining me now to discuss this and more, Senator Pete Ricketts from Nebraska. He serves on three Senate committees, including the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Ricketts, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you very much for having me on, Tony. I appreciate it. All right. So let's talk about the substance and the timing of the president's executive order yesterday. What does it do? Well, frankly, this is too little too late, and it is a just a naked political ploy in an election year. When Joe Biden took office in his first 100 days, he issued 94 executive actions to undo all the Trump-era policies that helped President Trump bring those illegal crossings to a 45-year low. So, for example, he stopped deportations. He stopped the remain of Mexico. He stopped the internal enforcement that Trump had made a priority, as well as going after sanctuary cities. Uh, he stopped building the wall. Trump had built 500 miles of the wall. And what this did is sent a message to the whole world that our southern border is open. And so thus, the 10 million people who have tried to enter the country illegally since uh, this has happened, since Joe Biden's opened our border, and all the things that go along with that, the human trafficking, the drug trafficking, you know, fentanyl is a leading killer of young people in our country, the national security crisis this has created. All of this has happened because of Joe Biden. And Americans know it. And now Joe Biden, because it's election year, says, hey, I want to look like I'm trying to do something. So his 95th executive action is to somehow try to limit it. But again, 2,500 people a day is still a huge number. When Jay Johnson, Obama's Department of Homeland Security secretary, said that 1,000 was a crisis. So he's not addressing the crisis. He's maintaining a catastrophe. Senator, we've heard for the last three and a half years that the administration had no authority. The, the president said, I, I can't do anything. I have to have Congress to act. I mean, what, did he find some magic lantern somewhere and, and get, get a couple of wishes so that he now all of a sudden found authority to do something? Isn't this exposing the fact that the president could have done something all along? It's absolutely exposing the fact that the president could have done something all along. The fact of the matter is that Joe Biden has the same tools available to him that President Trump had when he brought these crossings to a 45-year low. Joe Biden just chose not to use them. Want to use them? It was the, gov the Democrats' policy to have an open border policy. They wanted waves and waves of people to come here illegally. And now he is seeing that in an election year, Americans don't like it. And frankly, Americans are not going to be fooled by this stupid gesture on his part. They're not going to be fooled by this last minute weak attempt. And frankly, I think they're going to hold him accountable for it. I think you are accurate when you look at the polling data, Senator Ricketts, that this is driven more by politics than anything else. When you look at the president's actually losing his own base on this issue, when you look at African-American males um, uh, under the age of 40, I mean, they're, 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 he's losing uh, them. You look at the Hispanic population, they don't like his border policy. So th these are kind of reliable voters for the Democratic Party historically. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's why this is such a transparent political ploy on his part. And frankly, you know, as I travel my state, the two big issues that people talk to me about are the southern border and inflation. And they're both created by Joe Biden and his terrible policies. And as I talk to my colleagues here in the Senate, they tell me the exact same thing. It's about the border and it's about inflation. And I think the message is finally getting through to President Biden. He's trying to do something about it. But like I said, too little, too late, ineffective, and people will not be fooled by this. I mean, according to Gallup's monthly data, Americans named immigration as the top issue facing the country in February, March, and April, surpassing even those who, sh who cited the econo e economy. Uh, you know, that's despite these hor horrendous price increases that we've had. They, they're saying it's the border. Um, and then we're seeing these, uh, what used to be called soccer moms, who 
you know, many say that the president, former President Trump, lost in 2020, uh, are, have now turned into security moms and are moving away from the Democratic Party back to Republican candidates. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, we've seen it with the national security crisis. Under President Trump, there were a total through four years of 14 people on the FBI terrorist watch list come across the southern border. Just last year alone, last fiscal year, 169 just the southern border came across. We've seen an 8,000% increase in Chinese nationals. I've been to the border four times. Customs and Border Protection tell me it's Iranians, it's Syrians. This is all putting a huge, uh, put, put us hugely at risk. But a lot of those moms, you know what they're also seeing in their own school district. They're seeing a lot of kids coming in that don't speak English. And so the schools have to hire people to teach them English. They may be fourth grade age, but their education is gonna be less than that. And so they've gotta be brought up to speed. And so this is creating for schools a problem of having to hire the people, making taxes go up so that they can accommodate this. We're also seeing emergency rooms where more people are coming in that are not insured, don't speak English, and it puts a burden on our healthcare system. And, and people in our local area, they're seeing it now, right? And we're seeing it with the fentanyl deaths in our state. So this really, this is why, you know, when we say every state's a border state, this is what we're talking about. And people see it in real life. This is not just some, you know, hypothetical going on at the southern border a thousand miles away or whatever. This is something people see and feel every day. Well, continuing that line of discussion on security, uh, Senator Ricketts, yesterday, this, the uh, FBI Director Christopher Wray testifying that America is at greater risk today. Uh, he believes maybe an organized uh, terrorist effort here within our own country, but stop short of connecting it to our poorest border. Yeah, absolutely. I, I imagine that, first of all, Director Wray has been saying this for a while. He's been raising the red flags for a while because, of course, our border has been open for three years. I'm sure that uh, he's getting direction from the White House not to connect it directly, but we all know what the reason is. I mean, certainly also since October 7th and the attack on Israel, we have seen that the Islamic extremists are doubling down on their determination to create a terrorist attack here. As I said, our border is open. It's not just people from South America. It's people from all around the world coming, and that's what's putting us at huge risk here. I'm going to switch topics uh, for just a moment, uh, Senator, in our last uh, few minutes together. You serve, as I mentioned earlier, the Senate, on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Yesterday, the House passed a bill to, sanctions, to sanction the International Criminal Court uh, for their application for arrest warrants for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his defense minister. The White House has said they oppose these sanctions, said they want to work with Congress, but this isn't the approach that uh, they recommend. I'm not sure what approach they want to take. Question is, will this measure see the light of day in the Senate? Well, uh, as you recall, uh, my colleagues and I sent a letter to the ICC warning them that if they pursued trying to equate Israel with a terrorist organization like Hamas and tried to pursue uh, these arrest warrants, we were going to take action against them. Uh, it's happened in the House already, and we are uh, getting a bill together in the Senate to pursue that as well, or following on this, the House bill, to be able to get that passed. Uh, you know what? I, I got to tell you, I, this should not be a partisan thing. This is not just about Israel. It's about America as well, because if they can do it to Israel, who's not a signee to this, they can do it to us as well, and that puts our military members at risk. So this should be a bipartisan effort to sanction the ICC and let them know they've gone out of bounds on this one. And then if we can get that to the president's desk, the president will have to make the decision. But frankly, you know, sanctioning the ICC is a way to send them a message that we are not going to allow this to stand. Uh, is sanctioning, explain that for our viewers and listeners what that means. Yeah, so first of all, it would mean that if anybody involved with pursuing these charges, whether you're an investigator or whomever, if you're related to trying to pursue these charges against, for example, Prime Minister Netanyahu, we are going to restrict your visa. You're not going to be able to come to the United States. We're going to restrict any transactions that you have with the United States, whether you're trying to buy property here or whatever. Essentially, you will be banned from the United States. You will not be able to come here. So uh, that is one way that we can take a step against these folks uh, who are in the International Criminal Court who are going forward with this. And then if uh, you know that is not enough, we can work on other things to be able to do. But right now, that's a way to send a message to them is that, hey, we are serious about this. It seems like this is a no-brainer and that the Biden White House should be behind this. But 
as they've said, they're not. Senator Rick, it's always great to uh, see you. Thanks so much for, uh, for joining us today. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Senator Pete Ricketts of Nebraska.